Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Peugeot 106. The suspension is one of the strong points of the model. Unusually strong shock absorbers, good smoothness, and at the same time handling with a pleasing twist in the form of precise trajectory control in turns. Surprisingly, even with the dead suspension on Chinese components, the car retains good handling and comfort. The front suspension is more reliable than the rear. The racks could be considered eternal, if not for the weak thrust bearings. Moreover, the problem is precisely constructive. An annular bearing, according to the SS20 principle, picks up moisture and dirt, and then its walking surfaces corrode. All cars with such a design have similar problems. For example, on the Opel Vectra C, the lever and silent blocks are very tenacious. They can travel for 100 and sometimes for 200,000 km. The anti-roll bar and its bushings are consumable here, but it's inexpensive. The rear suspension is multi-link and significantly more expensive to maintain, and he does not like dirt and overload. All silent blocks are replaceable. They are inexpensive and there are not many of them, as you will not have to suffer with Volvo. It so happens that the silent block of the training arm saw in the aluminum bracket, and then it cannot be replaced in the garage. Also the large support arm, the low transverse arm corrodes. Otherwise everything is done for the people. Large repairs, as a rule, begin to the figure on the odometer over 200, but the training arm bushings and external transverse bushings may be asked to be replaced even when the millage is three times less. Overloading, broken springs, this happens, and dirt greatly affects the resource. Rear wheel bearings are not very reliable and corrode inside. It is recommended to listen to their work during a test drive and, if possible, spin the suspended wheel. Steering with conventional power steering has several interesting nuances. Firstly, on machines up to 2002, racks with an external power steering cylinder could be used. It's attached to the stem and body through the bushings, when, which can be worn out. Such a structure is repaired well, but it serves less, because the rack reducer is more loaded with torque and depends on the state of the silent blocks. In addition, the first is uneven due to the appearance of play in the drive. However, ordinary sleds were also installed, including on cars before restyling, then how lucky. But the rail with an external cylinder, if you buy it in the version for 400 or 5, they are interchangeable, can cost a new one much cheaper. Another nuance is associated with the steering column. The cotton shanks in it do not just play, but sometimes wedge. As a result, the upper oil seal of the old rail is badly broken, and it quickly begins to flow. If any jamming occurs, check the condition of the cotton joints. The rail itself is deeply hidden in the stretcher, and without removing it, you can not get close to it. Power steering pumps were used with variable displacement, but unlike full-fledged servotronics from ZF, here's a very primitive theme, when the power steering pump performance drops at high speeds, without taking into account the speed, which immediately causes a bunch of funny problems when the system is worn out, the pump runs at some speed and then there is no pressure again. Usually the problem takes on acuteness of up to 200,000 of millage. Changing the pump to a regular one is not difficult and not very expensive. You can adapt ZF from Schneewe. It looks like these pumps are sold many times more than Schneewe made themselves. The pressure of the native pump is 100, which is higher than that of the Schneewe pump, 87. But given the fact that a normal pump will not have a drop in performance when driving on a highway at high speeds, this is even useful. Since the machines are front-wheel drive only, the list of possible transmission problems is limited by the wear of the CV joint and the outboard bearing, and all these elements are very reliable. Even on cars before restyling, you can find original parts, traditionally. At each maintenance service, it is recommended to inspect the high hinge covers. They are not durable. The Peugeot 406 uses two series boxes, 5-speed and 6-speed, and a slightly weaker 5-speed. The former are usually found on versions with gasoline engines, 
2.2 to 2.9 liters and with powerful versions of diesel engines 2.0 or 2.2. And boxes of the second series can be found both with younger gasoline engines and diesel engines up to 2.1 liters. Boxes of the ML5T or ML6C series hold the moment up to 350 Nm. But the capabilities of the BE series are most modest, depending on the type of box, up to 300 Nm. The problems are similar for both families. First of all, this is the wear of the switching mechanism. Sewing of the cables leaks. With runs of more than 250,000, wear on the bearings of the input shaft synchronizer couplings is usually added. And for those who like to sleep from the heart, Problems with the differential are possible, it grabs the axles of the satellites. Cables and leaks in general are treated simply, new grease, new seals for the axle shafts, cleaning the breather, in extreme cases replacing the cables, just first you need to look at what diameter of the couplings the cables are, there may be confusion. Stage wear is not a problem either, its bushings are on sale, they usually just put up with the wear of the synchronizers. The G-Box continues to walk, albeit with difficulty or even crunching during fast shifts. Serious problems are the wear of the shift mechanism and the bearings of the input shaft of the G-Boxes. The backlash of the mechanism axis during operation on dusty roads can reach several millimeters, and repair, to put it mildly, is difficult. It requires the restoration of the axis, welding and machine work with re-turning and the manufacturer of the new axles. Well, the replacement of bearings is usually a complete overall of the gearbox, replacement and manufacture of new space washers, and in the ML5 or ML6 series, it is also the replacement of roller bearings of gears. By the way, in by the way, inexpensive domestic SK202616 are suitable here instead of the original two level ones. In general, it is often cheaper to buy a contract box than to repair your own, since these MCP series have been installed for many years on PSA machines and it is not so difficult to find it alive. The price will be 15 to 20,000 rubles, although a surprise may lie in wait for the owner. On parts of the cars there are boxes with non-standard gear ratios and their bell is also different. From experience, the versions for diesel engines 2.1 and gasoline 2.9 have differences, but non-standard boxes can be found on other versions as well. However, in any case, the problem is solved by some collective farming. There are two types of automatic transmissions. This is either the well-known AL4, AKDP0 or DP8 on Renault cars or ZF. 4 HP20 on cars with a 2.9 engine or a 2.2 diesel engine. The number of automatic machines is extremely small, which is not surprising. AL4 was just presented at 406, so it got the very first and most problematic series, and they were installed only with 2.0 engines before restyling, and after that also with 1.8 engines. ZF relied on top end versions, which in principle are few. So, AL4s usually do not survive. They were changed to manual gearboxes, previously the repair was expensive, and the death was initially few. Gasoline engines of the XU series are the strongest family of engines among the French, and the rest did not disappoint. The only serious puncture is the quality of the electric fans and their control system. Open there are problems with the resource of the electric motors themselves, wiring to them and reduced speed resistors. Either the spiral burns out, then the restoring fuse is not restored, then the deflector is clogged with snow. In a cold and humid climate, another nuance of the layout appears. The air intake of most motors is brought out very low. When forcing water obstacles, it is easy to run into a water hammer. However, now the air intake pipe of most cars is worn out and half turned off, so that the motor sucks air from a hot engine compartment. In this case, it does not give out full power in traffic jams, but there is no need to be afraid of a water hammer. 
Well, do not forget that the wiring of cars under the hood is extremely unreliable. Short circuits in the harnesses and simply rotted wires are more the rule than the exception. Damaged pads with broken plastic and oxidized contacts are also common. Everything is complicated by undeveloped antennas. In general, the car is clearly designed for dry and dusty roads, and not for constant mud. When buying or inspecting the wiring in the engine, compartment will avoid a lot of trouble down the road. At the very least, direct power wires should confuse you. It is also worth clarifying which gas pump is worth, but it is better to look at the flask. Broken pipes and incorrectly assembled flask, these are true signs of a collective farm. The fuel pump itself is weak. When replacing an ordinary Bosch from VAZ is suitable with minimal alterations. But often everything is assembled very crookedly. Before restyling, the main series of engines on the Peugeot 406 are the XU5, XQ7, XQ10 in their later versions. These are very good, very reliable motors. Not only due to their simplicity, but also due to their good performance. Their block is aluminium and the sleeves are wet, cast, iron and replaceable. The timing belt is driven by a belt on the 406, they mainly installed 16 valve versions. But the XU10 engine is available in a supercharged version and an 8 valve cylinder head. The design is quite sensitive to the build quality, but its resource is 500 plus, thanks to the thick liner and successful pistons, and a good power system and a good oil pump, and a streamlined design. The disadvantages are mainly associated with oil leaks, a weak crankcase ventilation system and an unsuccessful mechanical throttle. It will depreciate and also has a weak position sensor and flow meter. Even in the SAGEM 7 control unit, the idle regulation channel very often dies. It is very difficult to destroy a piston. The engine starts to eat oil if it is very rare to change the oil and the air filter. Overheat, twist into the cutoff and generally purposefully destroy the car. If serviced regularly and efficiently, then the motors of the XQ series are striking in the, their resource. Million kilometers without the capital is a very real bar. Separately, it is worth noting that the cruise control is implemented here as a separate unit which usually dies due to moisture in the engine compartment and catalysts often crumble with 300 plus millage. And in general, Peugeot's exhaust is not very reliable. After 10 years it begins to fall apart along the flanks, but repairs are not too expensive. The motors of the newer EW series are also reliable and sturdy motors, with an aluminium block and dry cast iron sleeves. The resource, of course, is less than that of the XQ due to a lighter piston and thinner piston rings, the presence of the EGR and a secondary air system, the chances to go 500,000 to the capital, but they are not very great, because that engine is much more sensitive to overheating and an extended oil change interval, most cars, the style of operation and maintenance of which is far from ideal, have an oil appetite already after 250,000 millage. Repair is complicated by the fact that there are no standard piston repair sizes. Although the need for invention is tricky, pistons from the second generation Focus are suitable for the 1.8 liter EW7 running engine itself. Fortunately, in most cases, there is no need to replace pistons. The problem is solved by replacing only the piston rings, since the wear of the liner and the piston itself is minimal, and the oil goes away due to caulking. In the most successful cases, it is generally possible to do without disassembly only by chemical decoking. The crankcase ventilation system is a headache. It differs not only for EW7 and EW12, but also for motors of the same type, but different years of production. Components such as plastic tubing and oil separators will be different and incompatible. And at the same time, they require regular replacement. Oil separator spouts break, hoses crack, and loose quick release couplings cause leaks. All this is not cheap, so it is not surprising that collective farming of crankcase ventilation in 406 is not uncommon. A lot of good things can be said about 2.9 liter V6 engines of the ES9 series, 
which the French like to refer to as 3.0. This is a more capricious and troublesome engine in the maintenance, in comparison with the inline force, but with a good resource. The problem is in the layout, leaks and unusual technical solutions. In addition to what has been said in other materials about this engine, I note that the timing for cars before restyling without phase regulators and a little cheaper than post styling ones. It is necessary to monitor the oiling of the belt. The front crankshaft oil seal turn out to be weak and in case of problems with ventilation it flows very strongly. Rough idling is caused by the air flow meter and leaks. Vibrations and ignition problems arise from the triple coil and spark plugs for the doors and the individual coils for the restyling. Less often due to the throttle and vacuum drive of the cruise control. We can also mention strange and expensive nozzles, a door styling pump and a whimsical thermostat. And also split timing gears on motors before restyling. In Russia 406 diesels are unpopular, which cannot be said about Belarus. Diesel engines of the XUD series before restyling and DW after are one of the most successful light diesel engines. Of course, they are found from the much later N47 or B47 from BMW in terms of traction and consumption, but for their time these were successful decisions. The XUD 9SD or XUD9TE and XUD11PTE engines are a family of pre-chamber diesel engines known since the 80s. It was introduced even on the predecessor of the 406, the Peugeot 405, with a mechanical injection pump and vacuum advance injection. The 406 equipped with the Bosch VE hydraulic electric injection pump, which is quite robust and inexpensive to maintain. The new one, of course, cost 140,000 rubles, but it is quite reliable and maintainable, and does not contain electronic in itself, unlike VP44 and all consumables are on sale. The main trouble with the engine, in addition to H and millage, is cylinder head corrosion, losing of the pre-chamber fit, breakdowns of the cylinder head gasket and cranks in the cooling jacket. It is relatively often and troublesome to adjust the valve clearances. He has a very strong piston group, the simplest fuel equipment, the simplest turbine and therefore a very good resource. Moreover, the supercharged diesel versions last longer than the naturally aspirated SD, because they have to be turned much less. For comparison, the turbocharged 1.9 has a peak uh, torque of 200 Nm, the 2.1 has 250 Nm and the naturally aspirated 1.9 has only 120 for the specific problems of the 406, it is worth nothing frequent breakdowns of the fuel filter. The design is unsuccessful and the heated versions are also very expensive. And the engine is very picky about the operation of the cooling system since the cylinder head is high. A decrease in the level of antifreeze at the first continuous load manifests itself as a breakdown of the gaskets. Motors of the DW family are in many ways more reliable than their predecessors and in general they are less troublesome. There are already hydraulic lifters in the valve drive, but the main thing is the common rail power system with direct injection, which means much finer flow control and very high efficiency at any load. This means not only a quick response to the gas pedal, but also the availability of options with a high degree of boost. The 90 to 110 strong versions of the DW10 have a fantastic resource, since the Bosch fuel equipment is very reliable, and if the engine is not overheated and the oil and filters are changed in time, then the chances of breakdown are minimal. Even if the timing belt breaks, the valves will not bend, there is still a lot of trouble when the belt breaks, primarily because it breaks the rockers and lifts the camshaft. Due to the 8 valve seal on the head, the injectors are installed very well, copper washers do not burn at least 50 to 80,000 km. The injection pump is strong, EGR vacuum and quite reliable. It is a pity that there are not many of them at 406, but those that exist are already with 350 plus millage. On this, information about the problems of Peugeot 406 is exhausted. If you know more, 
or do not agree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.